So when I tell you this, the first thing that's going to come to your mind is that I have lost my mind completely, that I'm basically a bull shill, everything under the sun, that I'm just basically giving you trades I'm not even partaking in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully that is not the case at the end of this video. Hopefully at the end of this video, you guys learn of a simple, I mean brain dead simple, and you've probably heard that a lot on YouTube about people talking in brain dead, but it truly is as brain dead as it can be for trading stocks with options, right? Now, options are a scary thing. Everyone's scared of options. I'm gonna explain it to you in a very simple matter. Very simple, one plus one equals two equation to trade stocks. This is as simple as we're gonna get it. We, in my opinion, I've been talking about this being a possible uh, bull trap, right? Going into the market. I'm still looking for that. We're gonna talk about a checklist that I've come up with to basically determine what needs to happen. So first off, let's dive into that checklist. Are we having any threats in the market that we need to be aware of, right? So tomorrow's CPI, when you guys are seeing this, CPI may have actually already come out depending when you're watching it, but they're expecting 3.3 to 3.3 for core with 2.4 to 2.4. Stagnant inflation, as we saw with shelter, right? Stagnant inflation for the market is actually a good thing, right? So they're not actually looking for this massive drastic drop in the market or inflation because... The market has come up with this weird thing in its mind that it's like, okay, if we see a massive drop, that means the Fed tightened too much. And then also, speaking of Fed tightening, we got Jerome Powell talking later this week. We also got a bunch of Fed members. We got a PPI on deck as well. So that's threat number two. We got the big man himself talking about it. I think he's really toned down the rhetoric in the sense of like, he just like, leave me alone type thing. I think that's what we kind of really got from his press conference last week. If you guys have not seen our coverage of that video, link in the description below as well. But going back, we got initial jobless claims Thursday, but really it's going to be the PPI. PPI is set to tick up slightly and the regular producer price is like 2.3, 2.1, right? So it's not the greatest number, but the market's not necessarily looking at this and being like, eh, they're, they're really just looking at one real crazy thing. We'll get to that in just a second. But then again, Friday, we have retail and Empire State Manufacturing. This is going to be very interesting to see the optimism. And also we would already had the optimism numbers, right? Funny I mentioned that of economic optimism supposed to come out in inflation New York expectations one year. If businesses are optimistic in October, right, this could be a lagging indicator. So don't necessarily base your whole trading strategy off of it. As we saw, the market is extremely, extremely greedy. And case and point, we have seen some ridiculous moves without even getting into extreme greed territory. We've seen markets can stay in extreme greed territory for quite a long time, especially with various different things that we're going to disarm some of them about the possibilities in the market and give you one single thing to look at to know if we're going to basically enter a correction slash or session. And it's really, really simple because it's indicated them pretty much consistently for the last two decades. So it's not the yield curve, actually. So if all those that follow the channel into the yield curve, it's actually not the yield curve. So jumping back to the Fed real quick, we're expecting rate cuts in December. Now it's still up for debate. City today said 50 basis point. A lot of people are thinking 25. The CPI number will pretty much determine these odds where they're going to stand. I personally think that they may actually give you another 50 because they don't want to piss the big man off and they also don't want to drain liquidity out the market. And now how can we know if there's going to be liquidity in the market, right? A lot of fear porn out there is talking about liquidity in the market, CMBS and all this. Yes and no, right? So I've been rambling about the reverse repo, which is essentially the, the piggy bank for the Fed. If this thing trickles down to a two digit number, we will keep you guys updated. Make sure you guys follow on X, link description below as well. But simply going back to this, right? This has been sitting and the reason the Fed is, I think, believe cutting is because they need to push liquidity. They basically need to allow the bond market to relax a little bit because truly deep down, they maybe not want to break everything because Jerome Powell's eagle is more important than anything else. And he doesn't want to be remembered as a Volcker. Also with inflation, it is not necessarily the velocity of money. It's just they haven't printed new money really. And we've seen the inflationary effects. So it's going to stick around, right? High inflation is going to stick around. But the question is, is the consumer going to feel better, right? Is there going to be relief, especially with some of the policies that are coming, right? The market is a forefronting event. And I would pretty much set to bet that the market is betting full on no crash possible. Exhibit number one.
Bitcoin hitting nearly 90K, 32% in just three days. Now, I was sitting down with a colleague of mine at work and we were talking about Bitcoin prior to the election. And I said, this thing could, I like around, uh, don't wanna see 65 again. And this was when we were headed, we were right at 60. I said, 65 below, I really don't wanna see that election happens. And this thing just goes bonkers crazy. And rightfully so, when the policies that are expected to come forward are gonna be very bullish for a lot of things. So Bitcoin being your bull fervency and sucking basically all the fur, the safe haven asset demand out of the bond sector and also the bond sector being uh, closed today, uh, we have not had it open actually yet at the time of recording this video because I'm recording it Monday night. The bond market was actually closed all of Monday, so we really didn't get to see anything. It's gonna be very interesting to see how the yield curve goes about. But enough rambling about the yield curve, enough rambling about Bitcoin. What is the strategy, right? What is the simplest strategy that we can look? Well, number one, what is Bitcoin doing? Because that's gonna be your risk on, risk off mentality. Check number one, is there any threats? CPI, yes, but do the numbers expectations expect us to be in a catastrophic number, right? Can they deliver a catastrophic number or market sentiment pretty much anchored? I would argue they're pretty much anchored. Now it's gonna be the next thing. So if you have this indicator, it's called Lux Algo, link in the description below as well. I will be giving this out in the Discord on our watch list that we're trying to build for the Discord behind the paywall, but it's basically gonna be pretty, pretty inexpensive. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know and go down to the link description below. The Discord link will be down there. We're trying to build up a community there with it's gonna be a little bit behind a paywall, but it's gonna be costing you less than your Netflix subscription. If your Netflix subscription can make you hundreds of dollars a month, it's pretty much worth checking out, right? Get in while the getting is good to the Discord because all those that are in there will probably get grandfathered in. So enough rambling. Well, number one, what is this magical indicator? And simply put, it is the smart money flow that I'm looking at in the oscillation. I'm looking for this little yellow dot or white dot to show up on the daily. That is gonna to indicate to me on any stock that I'm looking, okay, this is a time to sell calls. If I own the stock in 100 shares, I highly recommend anyone trying to accumulate 100 shares of a company they own, but I know that's not possible for everyone. Now, this is where I would basically say, okay, is the trend catcher green or are we in an uptrend, right? If you don't have these indicators, how can you determine this? Well, you can have the watch list or you guys can look at basically, are we in an uptrend? If the answer is we're in an uptrend, then I'm looking, okay, this is where maybe I stop and look to accumulate if we have a pullback. Now, where do I get concerned with things that are going on in the market? Well, that's really when we get into the weekly. Subsequently, this is Amazon. I'm using this as an example because I believe Amazon is going to pull back on the short term. The weekly has been green all the way since August, and since August, it's been on a rip. Okay, so we got green dot on the weekly. That's where you should have been accumulating the most and accumulating, continuing to accumulate on the dips on the daily. Now we layer the next thing in, the crash indicator. Do we look at the monthly to see what's going on? Well, if you look back in August, that was pretty brutal going into their earnings because we were in a crash signal per se or a severe pullback. Amazon actually dipped on that month exactly. We dipped almost 20%. That was pretty brutal for Amazon and you would have saw the early warning signs with the monthly candle popping up. So now the thing is on this month, we have a bullish signal and we're halfway through the month. So I wanna see if this bullish signal grows. I'm gonna pay attention to it. As we saw, we had a little bit of a contraction, but Amazon has basically blown up. So this is still telling me, hey, Amazon is a buy on the longer term timeframes. This, we need to target accumulation, right? If we could jump to the weekly, okay, the trend is still valid. We're still in a bullish trend, but the daily is basically saying, hey, look for that pullback. And we can do this with various stocks. And I'm gonna show you guys my portfolio and what I'm holding in just a moment and explaining the logic behind this. So let's jump over to everyone's favorite company, NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA, again, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. This is where it's a little bit of a cheat code, but I'm gonna be providing this in the watch list, right? You're gonna get this view. So NVIDIA, okay, buy signal previously going into the election. Okay, I missed that boat. I bought it today, but I missed that boat. But let me explain why I was buying it. RSI looking like it wants to squeeze and also we are above the green line with an impulse. Now let's go to the weekly. 
same story this thing has plenty of room to run historically it has been in not anywhere near where it'd be selling off right we can look back in history to indicate where it sold off well number one you have to get into oversold territory and you have to be above this line so okay everything's pointing in one direction let's check the monthly right okay we just got another green candle on the monthly after we were supposed to calm down the last two months as nvidia has been in a stagnation pattern but it's not a super strong signal on that monthly as we're going into the election again i was saying that i did not want to invest until this election was over because i wanted a clear defined path i was okay with missing a 30 40 percent rally if i can invest with confidence because i want to basically be able to leave my portfolio completely alone and not have to look at it every single day well you gotta look at it every single day but only for five minutes that is my financial goal that is my goal for 2025 is build a portfolio that i can look for 10 minutes a day and that's it and it prints me money so now nvidia looks good now let's do the same exercise with apple right i bought apple 100 shares on apple and the first thing it does it runs me over right so why did i buy apple well let's simply put it this way i was looking at smas and all this stuff and i shouldn't be so i'm encouraged with apple right okay buy signal here at about one uh, 221 we came down to a defended it okay that's that's bullish confirmation right now we have a gap above us so we can push higher that's what i'm expecting i also sold calls against it just to protect myself because i wasn't sure about this trade necessarily but it could be forming a w it forms a w that's bullish as well but let's go through the same checklist we did for Amazon, for NVIDIA, and Apple. Okay, bullish on the daily has a lot of room to run, right? We can see that there's a plenty of room to run here. Let's jump over to the weekly. Let's see what it's saying. Okay, trend is green. Okay, trend is green. Our sign not looking too hot, but the weekly is saying, hey, it's not in the hottest spot right now. Again, that's why I was looking at Apple as a discount opportunity, why I sold the call, right? So the weekly saying, hey, you should have sold a call already or had a call sold on it as protection because you can just keep rolling it. And I'll get into what happens if a call gets into the money as we'll be talking about in just a moment. But the monthly, right? Monthly is having a bad signal on it as well. However, I think this with the broader market is going to eliminate, right? So this is an early warning sign that things may not be too hot, but I think Apple has a huge opportunity and also selling this call, I have an opportunity to get out with my skin intact. So I'm gonna watch Apple very carefully, right? We want to look on a closing basis. We don't necessarily want to look at it from a basically day to day. We wanna say, okay, the monthly showing this hasn't closed. Has to close in order to give you the indicator. So something like this, I basically be saying, okay, there's a little bit cause for concern, but I am playing a more risky strategy. RSI hasn't actually crossed yet, so we're not really getting that doomsday scenario. And if we look at where Apple previously sold off, right, so those bigger sell-offs in Apple's history occurred when the RSI was already into the 70s, and we're still showing 89% on the trend strength, right? Maybe coming down right here, and we still got the rest of the month to run. I'm gonna keep an eye on this one, so that's why I have my position the way it is, right? Apple's been stagnant this month and not looking too hot, but the daily, I believe, has the ability to fix the rest of the chart. Similar stocks like I bought Meta, right? Meta, similar trend, bullish here. Weekly is bullish. Curling, right? Monthly is bullish, right? So Meta, Microsoft as well. Microsoft actually was downtrending for quite some time, but if I look at the daily recently, we've had a bullish signal. If I look at the weekly, bullish signal as well. So again, the monthly is not this end-all be-all. The monthly is for your crash indicator at the top being a big round circle, right? So we can look at the S&P and I can show you what that big round circle looks like. So if we go back to 2021, right? Everyone remembering this fun time right here, we saw a massive big couple circles popping up. That was our early warning sign that something may be brewing. We also saw the monthly trend catcher change red. So until those things happen, I wouldn't be expecting the month to completely capitulate. Also, we are seeing that we had a large accumulation of uh, smart money flowing into the market and then slowly started trickling away as we were basically not trending as bullish or as strong, right? So we still have room to run and subsequently looking at the daily, right, for the S&P. Okay, bullish signal hasn't given me a bearish signal on the daily and that's basically what I'm gonna do. If the daily gives me a bearish signal with a white circle, I'm gonna basically close my positions. It's as simple as that or sell calls against them if they're stock-based positions. Again, the NASDAQ, similar story, right? Looking at this, 
bullish on the daily. We can jump to the weekly, bullish as well. Monthly, still bullish. Okay, so we're establishing a trend. Now let's jump over to the portfolio so you guys can see what's going on here. So simply put, Apple's my biggest holdings from a stock perspective because I wanted to take that more risky trade. I've sold Microsoft, Meta, NVIDIA, NASDAQ, S&P, spreads, put spreads particularly in order to basically mine theta. I mine close to $20 a day to every single day for this portfolio existing. Now, I have a rumble call that is in the money. What am I going to do with this? Well, right now it's 39 days to expiration. I'm not touching it to 21 days. This thing can do whatever it wants. And then I will either decide to let it expire in the money because I'm profiting significantly off those shares, or I'm just going to roll it to like eight or nine, roll it to April, let it just chill out. Again, they have earnings today, so I may roll it basically tomorrow after the or before the close in order to take advantage of that IV. Who knows? I may do different things with it, but then again, I'm going to basically look at it and assess it at that 21 day mark. All these positions are 40 plus days out, uh, 46 in the case in the video because I opened it today and 39 for the others because I've decayed a little bit. Again, I'm down on some of the positions because some of these stocks took a little bit of a chunk, but I'm gonna still be looking at them for medium to long-term gains, managing them at the 21 and basically using this as a self-managed portfolio. If none of the indicators on the daily show up, then we're just gonna manage it. And I'll keep you guys updated of how this portfolio goes. And yeah, that's pretty much the basis of this entire portfolio, which is gonna be an awesome portfolio. I'll keep you guys updated. Hopefully you can join the Discord and also our weekend deep dive linked over here where you can check out the exact levels you need to pay attention to for the know if you're bullish or bearish on the week. It is definitely setting up to be a bullish week going into CPI, so make sure you guys Keep an eye on that video and also hope to see you in the Tuesday live stream later tonight and Thursday. So hope you have a wonderful time, guys. See you in the live stream.